So last week we looked at hell. This week I want to look at some doctrinal things over the next couple of weeks. Just uh, as we we look at these doctrinal things to empower us to know why we believe what we believe. Uh, I think as I was reading, uh, one of the things that stood out to me was not only do we believe in something, but what does the Bible say about something? And so it's easy to say, well, our church doesn't believe that way. I think even a better way to look at it is we don't want to say just our church, but we want to say, well, the Bible doesn't support that, but the Bible does support this. And so I want to ask us tonight, when it comes to the doctrine of uh, uh, once saved, always saved, what does the Bible support with that? What does the Bible say? How would we refute it? How would we, how would we look at it? And so, uh, for a few moments this evening, I want us to think about this. If someone said to you, well, do you believe in once saved, always saved? Do you believe in eternal security? What verse would you turn to? What would you look at? You don't have to say it yet, but think about it. We'll talk about those at the end in case there's something that I don't go over. I'm sure that there's way more evidence of what I'll be showing you this evening. But I think that when we look at once saved, always saved, one of the things that we can look at first of all is understanding that uh, God's intent was to come into the world to save the world and not condemn the world. So we know that favorite verse that we all like to quote, John 3.16, for God so loved the world, it presents a love of God. And then he says that he gave his only begotten son, the gift of God, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life, salvation. But then let's look at verse number 17, where the Bible goes on. He says, for God sent not into his, his son into the world to, to condemn the world, See, God's mission was not to condemn the world alone. The law already brought condemnation, but what God's design in sending His Son for was to bring salvation or justification. The Word of God goes on to say, but that the world through Him might be saved. The only way to salvation is through Jesus Christ. He who believes on Him is not condemned. But he who believes not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. I think that we have to understand that uh, to believe, uh, we have to engage in a relationship with God. And if you're not engaged in a relationship believing, you can't be saved. So let's talk about it. Let's prove it a little bit farther than that. We know that God provided salvation. So what is, what is the basis of the salvation? And what is the extent of the salvation? And what is the, uh, the, 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 the gift of salvation that God gives? Uh, keep, that mind, keep that word in mind that it is a gift of salvation that God gave. Because we're going to be looking, I'm going to be reading some things tonight from a very popular uh, minister who I appreciate and I've heard great things from, but he is definitely scripturally wrong when he teaches an eternal security doctrine. And he does. I'm not being mean by naming a name tonight. I'm calling out truth tonight. So we'll talk about it here a little bit. Does anyone know uh, if we were to... Go back and find the root of where once saved, always saved come from. What would you say that that came from? Do you know what the root of that comes from? Where did it start? Where did it come from? All right. Well, knowing that the object of Christ's mission, as we read in John 3.16, the object of his mission was to come to earth to bring salvation. That's what he was very uh, uh, objective for. If I ask you why you 
have a profession that you have. You may say, uh, it's a good job that pays good. Maybe that's the object of why you're doing what you do. Or maybe it's because it brings me deep joy. The object of Christ's mission was to bring salvation. And bringing salvation, in the 16th century, there were a breaking away from the Roman Catholic Church. Martin Luther was a part of this, we know his name. And you may also be familiar with a man named John Calvin. In fact, the Calvinistic doctrine is what says, says once saved, always saved. It kind of takes us back to that. And when we look at even modern day, you'll find that modern day, that uh, people such as, I'm going to give a name here, Charles Stanley is still a Calvinist in his teaching. I'm going to read some things from him. I'm looking at a lot of things that I'm bringing tonight. I'm bringing from the positional paper from the Assemblies of God. You can go on their website, the Assemblies of God. There's a lot of things I don't agree with with the Assemblies, but their core doctrine is very good. So uh, a lot of what I'm bringing tonight comes from their positional paper on once saved, always saved. And so that's where I'm making my references. So uh, these people who are Calvinist or a lot of folks who still hold to that doctrine, once saved, always saved, uh, eternal security, uh, they, they say this, that if we ever made a decision for salvation, there's no way to lose salvation. Even if the appearances are otherwise, God does not require a consistent attitude. Charles Stanley said this, uh, he said, God does not require a consistent attitude of faith in order to be saved. Only an act of faith in Christ. Even if we die in a completely reprobate state, cursing God and rejecting any relationship with Him, we would still spend eternity in His presence. Believers who, uh, who lose or abandon their faith will retain their salvation, for God remains faithful. And if a believer, uh, for all practical purposes, becomes an unbeliever, his salvation is not in jeopardy. You can, uh, you, can, uh, you can give it back only if the giver accepts the return. In the case of salvation, God has a strict no return policy. The, uh, the, this effectively removes the uh, choice after the point of salvation, as one cannot abandon one's salvation. Uh, so, Charles Stanley holds to this, and what I read to you, let me just express to you, just in modern lingo, I think it expresses itself well, but Charles Stanley teaches that if God, this great giver, and he's the greatest of all givers, right? I mean, he shows us the standard of giving, and he's the greatest lover, and he sent his love to us in the form of his son, giving us Jesus Christ. Now, for us... To be able to have salvation, Charles Stanley says, is we make a, a conscious choice that we are saved. God, I, I accept your gift of salvation. But somewhere along the line, we decide that we don't put our faith in Jesus Christ. And we no longer hold salvation true and dear to our heart. And we want to give it back. But God says, no. There is no return policy. I have given and I won't accept it back. So for those who believe in eternal security, and this comes from the, the words of Charles Stanley, those who believe in eternal security believe that if you're saved, even if you die in a very reprobate, blasphemous, sinful way, you will still be saved in the presence of God when you die. That's a very damaging doctrine. It's a very concerning doctrine. So we want to look at what does, what does the Word of God have to say about this. Christians, uh, he believes, are secure uh, with God uh, regardless. And he feels that if there isn't the doctrine of eternal security, Christians become fearful and they don't share and evangelize. That's what Charles Stanley says. So there's no way to annul your relationship with the Savior. If you once accepted it, there's no way of getting out of it. Let's look at the Word of God. 
What does God's word say about this? What do you think already about this? The violation of free will. That, if you God so far goes and go as far as saying, well, if you're going to heaven, you don't want to not. Who's to say you can't say, well, you're going to go to hell whether you want to go to heaven or not? Well, and that's the problem with uh, even if you look farther at Calvinism, uh, you'll find that uh, predestination, all of that is linked really tightly in with all of that. Now, I'm not done with a lot of study on what the position of some of these people are who, who speak this. Uh, I don't know if they believe in predestination or not, but, but that's very interesting. You know, and, I'm not, and I'm sure that they would have a way to skirt around it. I don't know their skirt, though. Uh, you know, what they would say. But, it, but it's very interesting. Alright, so I believe that the Bible does offer examples of those who departed and left the faith and left, left their salvation and they are no longer saved. Uh, so, Jesus, in the book of Luke, chapter number 8, turn with me tonight. I'll, I'll try uh, to, to, to give you some good information that I feel is power packed. I mean, it's it was good for me, and I hope it's good for you. I want it to be. In Luke chapter number 8, we could really start reading at verse number 5. And we read about, really back at verse number 4, the parable of the sower who uh, the seed is sown. The word of God says, uh, A sower went out to sow a seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. So the, the seed didn't even have a, plant, a chance to, 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 to root and to grow. And some fell upon a rock. As, it was, as soon as it sprung up, it withered and uh, away, uh, because it lacked, it lacked the moisture. And, and some fell among the thorns. And the thorns sprung up with it and choked it. And others fell on good ground and sprang up and bare a fruit a hundredfold. And uh, so he goes on down and he talks about the mysteries of the kingdom of God. He says in verse number 12, those by the wayside were those who hear and, 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 and the devil comes and he takes away the word from out of their heart. So they hear, but they're never res uh, responsive to the word of God because the enemy steals away that seed. And uh, uh, he doesn't want them to believe lest they become saved, the word of God says. And those that fell upon the rock, uh, they received the word with joy, uh, uh, but there was no root. And, and while they believed, uh, because of temptation, they fell away. And then there were some that fell among the thorns when they heard uh, the thorns and the cares of this world choked it out. So we see that there were reception to the word of God. And folks started well. But because of the enemy, because of the cares of this world, they fell away. How many of us know folks who've made a commitment because they've heard the word of God and they felt the spirit of God and they've made a, a commitment of salvation, but the enemy soon comes in and he steals away the seed and, and, and then you find that there are places where uh, the cares of this world just seems to take people away from the things of God. We have to be careful of that, by the way, because I've seen people serve God for a lot, a lot of years. Now, I would never name names, and, 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 but I've seen people, even in my time of pastoring here, folks that were here long before I was ever here, and, and they, they did what, but the cares of this, and now they're not even in a place with God where they should be. So it's evidence that uh, there can be a falling away. I think that an understanding, I think that this parable teaches it in a greater way. And Luke, uh, how about Luke chapter number 12? Let me go there first. I was going to go somewhere else, but I think I'm going to go to Luke 12. And really, you could go back to verse number 41, 42. The Bible says, and the Lord said, Who then is that faithful and wise steward? 
whom is the Lord shall make ruler over his household to give uh, them their possession of meat in due season. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when uh, he comes, shall find him doing. Of a truth I say unto you, he will make him ruler over all that he hath. But, uh, but and if the servant say in his heart, My Lord delays his coming, and shall begin to uh, beat the, the, the men servant and maidens, and eat and drink, and, and, be, and be drunk, the Lord of that servant will come in that day, and, and he will look for him, the Bible says, at, at that hour when he's not aware, and he will cut him in supper. Here's someone who starts faithful, but doesn't finish faithful. And so there's a falling away. It doesn't matter how well we begin. It matters how we begin and how we end. In John chapter number 15, I think this is one of the greatest parables that Jesus shares that support the need to have a right relationship with God. Jesus said, and I'm just kind of giving you jumping down there and kind of paraphrasing some of this for us tonight. But Jesus said, I am the vine, he's the true vine. And my father, he is the husband. And every branch, who's the branch? Yeah, the believer is the branch. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, the Bible says that he, the father who is the husbandman, what does he do? Also, he takes it away. He purges it that it may bring more fruit. Jumping down to verse number four, the branch cannot bear fruit in itself except it abide the vine. He said, I am the vine, and you are the branches who, who abides in me, and I am him. The same shall bring forth much fruit. If a man abide not in me, he is cast as a branch and is withered. And, and the Bible says that men gather it together and cast it into a fire and spurt. Jesus was clearly saying that for those who do not abide in him, there can be a season of abiding in him, but if that branch does not bear fruit, and if it's not being producing, if it's withered, it, 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 it's cut off. The Father cuts it off, and then it is cast into fire. It was a type of, of, of men and women uh, who come to know Jesus Christ as their Savior. He is the vine. The only way that we'll have a life and the only way that we can bear fruit and produce is abiding in Him. But if we stop abiding in Him and we don't bear fruit and we don't produce, the Bible is very explicit. This is Jesus Himself saying it will be cut off and it will be cast away and it will be burnt. So even Jesus himself did not support the doctrine of eternal security or once saved, always saved. It's really tonight about this. It's really about remaining in the body and abiding in the body and keeping our relationship right with Christ. The church has to be in love with Jesus and love Jesus. And if we don't abide and love him, and cast into the fire. Uh, there's much I could refer to. Romans 8, 1 Corinthians 5. Uh, but Jesus gives much support to that. Well, Justin, look up Galatians 5, 4, if you would. Well, Justin's looking up Galatians 5 4. Turn with me in your Bibles to 1 Timothy, chapter number 1. And we're going to look at verse 19 and 20. 
Go ahead, bro. We just have that. Christ has become of no effect unto you. <coughs> Whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. Wow. Paul <coughs> said that you can fall from grace. He was warning the Galatians about not going back and living by the law because there's a better way. And Christ is that way. Paul also said this in verse number 19 of 1 Timothy chapter number 1. He said to Timothy, he said, holding faith. What is faith? It, it's, it's maintaining our relationship with Jesus Christ and keeping our hearts and our minds upon Him and keeping our lives uh, living the way that God wants us to live. That's holding faith. Keeping the cross as the center of our affections. And the Bible says, and a good conscience. It speaks of following the Word of God the way that God wants us to live. That is the good conscience part. So if, you're, if, 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 you're, if you fall away from Christ, you're, you're not getting the Word of God. You're, not, you're, you're probably not attending church. You're not keeping yourself in the place where the Word of God is being planted in your life. So there isn't that good conscience. Paul said, holy faith and a good conscience. He said, which some, having put away concerning the faith, have made shipwreck. He said, man, there's some who have let go of faith and a good conscience, and, and their life is a shipwreck. How many of us know that, folks who, 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 who have put away the faith, and really, they can look like they have it all together on the outside, but their life is a shipwreck on the inside because they don't have Christ. And then, and then, Paul gets pretty specific. He says, of whom Hymenaeus and Alexander, wow, he names two, those are two that are not holding to the faith. He said, whom I have delivered unto Satan. Now, if they've been delivered unto Satan, you think that they're going to go to heaven? No, their life is a shipwreck. They have let go of faith. Then, Paul says, that they may learn not to blaspheme. Do you know what Paul did? I think it's clear for us to say that for those who give up on the faith and their relationship with Jesus Christ, they're the vice of God those are last Paul put them there. They won't make it to heaven. So, Paul gives Timothy The words of encouragement in 2 Timothy chapter number 2. In verse number 11. Verse number 12 he says, It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we've not died a death to ourselves and we're not resurrected in newness of life and live in that newness of life, we will not live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, the Bible says that he will deny us. So you can know Christ and be in a relationship and you can turn your back and say, I deny that. That's a bunch of hogwash. The Bible says that for those who deny Christ, Christ will deny them. If we believe not, yet he abides faithful, he cannot deny himself. The writers of, of Hebrews as well, he talked about the place of being that when someone loves the Lord and lives for God, and yet turns their back on Christ and goes back to a sinful nature. The writer of Hebrews says that would crucify him over again. So it's saying, the work's not good enough. I crucify him again. So that place of 
losing our salvation. You know, it's once again, we live in a world of seeker-sensitive individuals who's looking for a gospel that is very comfortable. And I feel that this is a doctrine that many will believe because they're very seeker-sensitive. They want it all inclusive. They want the security of heaven without any restraints here on earth. I wonder tonight, do you have any scriptures that you would say support that we can lose our salvation? The good news is that God does save. The great news is that He delivers from sin. He sets free. The Bible says, He who the Son set free is free and lead. He allows us to walk in the power of the Spirit. And living anything beneath that is not salvation. Once again, I want to say that there are a lot of things, there's messages that I've heard from Charles Stanley that have been encouraging. There's a lot of great things that he's done. But we've got to be careful even when we're listening to the radio or television or reading a book that has a lot of good information in it, that that information doesn't grab hold of us and provide some type of loop that makes us think that we can live anywhere beneath living holy. Because God wants us to live holy. And no sin is going to inherit the kingdom of God. That would be wonderful. I, 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 you know, that, that doctrine has progressed from where it is today to where, you know, I talk to people where I work and they'll tell me, oh, I, I, I love listening to, who's a guy that's always smiling big? Joel Osteen. I love listening to Joel Osteen because he's so encouraging. He's so uplifting. I like when I hear a message like that. 
Yes, we all like to be encouraged and we all like to be uplifted. All of us, every one of us. And I like that too. But if I'm not ever told the truth, I'm not ever going to live pure and right. And I think that eternal security has...